How's it going, everybody? As usual, we're going to let some folks sort of trickle in here. I know I just sort of opened up the floodgates. So I think uh, I think it, it only makes sense, Jim, you know, our, our crazy co-host here, Jim Armstrong, the guy jumps out of planes. If you've if you've joined before, you've, you've actually seen it. We've done this. But I think I don't think there's any other flooring webinars that, that, that start in this fashion. So, Jim, why don't you share your screen and show All us right. your uh, insanity? Yeah. This is a track dive I did a few weeks ago. I started skydiving in 19, uh, I'm sorry, 2019. Uh, so almost three years now. And this is a jump I just did recently. This is, this is insane. And it's crazy too, because your wife emailed me over the weekend. She needed a link for something. And she said, my husband's jumping out of a plane. So now I get to see, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Now, this is called a track dive. We're actually going, it's a slow track, but you'll see my arms are back by my sides instead of out in front and my legs are closer together. We're actually getting horizontal speed. We're probably doing 80 miles an hour forward. That's insane. <laughs> oh. oh, boy. That was crazy. So, tune in next time, and we'll we'll play a wingsuit jump for you. Okay, awesome. <laughs> On that note, I'm going to get right into it. My name is Brandon. I'm the director of dealer operations here at Roombo. Uh, first of all, first of all, thank you guys uh, for joining us today. I know it's a, a Thursday and it's a work day, and I really appreciate you guys taking some time uh, to join us. If you're a recurring guest, I just want to thank you guys for your support. You guys are the best. Uh, and if it's your first time at a Roombo University webinar, uh, you're in for a real treat. You picked a, a really good one to start with. Um, you guys just saw I'm joined by our crazy co-host, Jim Armstrong. And oh. today, <laughs> how's it going? Uh, and today we have an amazing special guest and I'm going to get to an intro shortly, but uh, Chad Ogden is with us today, president of Q Floors. Uh, as is customary, before we get right into it, I'm going to give you guys a very quick update on some uh, news and some housekeeping for the room vote team. Uh, since our last webinar alone, I think that was two months ago now, uh, we've averaged a brand new brand uh, supplier joining our program and adding their products to the platform. Uh, we've averaged uh, one a week. Uh, the list is pretty impressive. By York. Eastern Flooring Products, Gemcore, Harris Flooring, Krauss, Naturally Aged, Suncrest Supply, and most recently Mannington have joined the platform uh, or in the process of adding their products to the platform to provide you guys with their products in the visualizer. So if you carry any of those brands and they're not in your visualizer today, you can log in and add them to your tool through Roomvo Pro for free. Uh, and we have a lot more on the way. So go and do that now. And if you need any help, obviously you can email your uh, Roombo rep. We also have some really big product updates. Uh, for those of you who have logged into Roombo Pro recently to manage the brands that are in your visualizer, you will have seen a massive UI update. Uh, we have made it easier than ever to navigate. We also added a whole new UI overlay to the visualizer itself specifically to the landing page, making it easier for customers to upload their own photos and see what your products look like in their space. Uh, you know, as the economy is a little bit uncertain uh, on the horizon, we're super proud to be able to provide retailers with either a free visualizer or a very powerful website at an extremely uh, reasonable monthly price. They start at just $20 a month we find that during these times, and we saw it at the beginning of COVID too, retailers scale back on some really important spending. And I think that that's the perfect segue for our special guest today. Uh, and, and I believe some introductions are in order. Our first, it, uh, the, the first intro that I wanna make is of course our co-host uh, who's been here from the beginning of Roombo University, Jim Armstrong, who is an internationally known trainer and coach for flooring dealers. He's the founder and president of Flooring Success Systems, 
uh, a marketing services and coaching program for dealers. Since 2007, thousands of dealers across the US and Canada have relied on Jim's methods to get more customers, higher margins, and gain an unfair advantage over the big box stores. And of course, Mr. Chad Ogden, the CEO and president of QFloors, which is a complete flooring software system that equips floor dealers to efficiently run all aspects of their business, raise their profits, and reduce stress. Frankly, it's one of the most respected and, and well-known flooring uh, technology companies there is. Uh, Chad is a third generation flooring professional and he grew up in the flooring industry. I'm super excited to have you on today and uh, no one here wants to hear me speak anymore. So on that note, Chad, I'm, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you for that uh, great introduction. I don't know how true all that is, but uh, it was very nice. Thank you so much. Great you know, before, you before, you, before you jump in, Chad, I want to yeah. add something as well, because yeah. I first met you, oh gosh, probably in 2015 at a Surfaces event. And, you know, we, we've, we've talked numerous times and the, the way that you guys are helping floor dealers, uh, you know, systemize their businesses and squeeze more money out of their businesses is really important. And I've just, since, since we planned this webinar, um, news of a U.S. recession has really gone up. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's almost certainly we're going to go into a recession. And uh, I've been having dealers ask me about that. And one of the things about being in a recession a recessionary period is it means your pie, the pie of available clients or prospects is shrinking. And so when we talk about stop leaving money on the table, which is the title of your presentation today, Chad, um, that is so critical. It's, it's important anytime, but when, but when you're in a, in a shrinking inflation, I'm uh, sorry, a recessionary period, you know, mining that hidden gold, stop leaving money on the table is really important. And so again, just since we planned this webinar, this, this news is, has been coming over the transom and I'm just hearing it from dealers. So I'm really glad to have you on today so that we can uh, he hear about uh, how you, your strategies, so dealers can pick up that extra money that they're currently not. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, I've got some ideas here and, um, you know, some things that we can, we can do to help out. In fact, we'll be talking about recessions just a little bit uh, throughout the, throughout the presentation. So that was a great introduction uh, to what we're going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to throw my screen up here on the on the share here so that everybody can see it. We'll see. Can you see it? Yes. Is that is that looking pretty there? Awesome. Gorgeous. <laughs> we'll see That's what not, comes. not just a PowerPoint oh. slide. That is a work of art. That is a work of art. Well, yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll see, but hopefully the the information that comes with this is as pretty as the slide. So, um <laughs> I, uh, I just wanted to introduce a little bit um, of, of our topic today. So I'm going to take about five minutes just to, just to give us a, a little introduction. Um, I have always been into sports since I was a very young kid. Um, I played football all through Little League and high school. I actually played D1 football um, at BYU for a year. Um, if you've ever seen the movie Rudy, um, that would be me. I was the shortest guy on the whole team. So I, I was looked like a little, little guy compared to all these giants and stuff. Um, but I, uh, I, uh, I got beat up quite a bit. The, the, the defense that year for the college was the number one rated defense in the, in the nation. They had the Outland trophy winner and they had about six or seven guys go pro off that defense. So I was the running back. They would give me the ball to run the other team's uh, offense. And then I had to run into the teeth of this defense. And it was a, it was quite an experience, but I've always loved sports, been into sports. After my football, um, I couldn't not do anything. So I took a basketball and played basketball for 25 years, uh, three or four times a week, you know, pretty consistently. And 
And then when I hit 50, I could start to feel some things weren't going right. And I had, I knew I was going to blow something out if I kept playing basketball. It's kind of hard on your body. And so I quit basketball and I, again, had to take up something. So I took up, uh, took up riding bike, started riding bikes. And I, when I started, I just bought like a two or $300 bike off the internet and then started riding a little bit. And my brother gave me a bike. So I kind of a road bike. So I started riding a little bit more, got into it a little bit more. And a couple of years ago, I kind of broke down now and bought a, an actual road bike. Right. And just recently I, I went 80 miles one day. So uh, for me, that was like, you gotta, you gotta know that that was That's like great. So so I've kind of kind of gone down that road, right? Of I've got kind of gotten to biking here a little bit lately. So I uh, today I thought that maybe we would start off by talking about bikes a little bit. Okay, um, I uh, I know that most people can relate to this because most people have ridden a bike sometime in their life, um, you know, and we usually start with um, uh, bikes that are not really complicated, right? Most of the bikes have one gear. Um, you know, we probably a Walmart special or something like that, that we're learning on. But as the years go on, we tend to get into bikes that are a little bit more sophisticated, right? That can take us a little bit farther, that can do a little bit more. And so, you know, a bike with one gear kind of limits what we can do, but a bike with multiple gears can help us get to where we're going a little bit faster, okay? I think you'll see where I'm getting to here in this second. So we're limited with, if, with bikes with just one gear, with our performance, our speed, how far we can go, right? But as we get into more sophisticated bikes, the gears and how they're designed and stuff will allow us to perform in better ways, okay? The result, with better bikes, we can go faster, longer, and uh, with less effort, right? It, it, it's the tool though, that's allowing us to do that, not the person, so to speak. So um, that tool has been very important. And so how I wanna kind of talk about this today is we need to be using the right tools in our business, Jim, just like you were bringing up, we're gonna be heading this recession. If we're using the wrong tools, we're gonna be, sitting there pedaling as fast as we can and we're not gonna be going where we need to go. And it's not gonna give us the efficiency that we need to survive what you're talking about this recession, right? So this is what we're gonna talk about a little bit today, okay? In our businesses, there are some core functions that we need to be able to perform on a routine basis, on a daily basis, right? Now th this isn't a complete list, but it's just kind of an idea of the things that we have to do, right? We have to be able to track our leads and be able to write up invoices for customers and be able to um, take customer payments and purchase the products that they're looking for and track our installers, our commissions and inventory and our vendor bills and all these different kinds of things that we've gotta be able to do, right? We've gotta be able to understand how all this is working together at one time. So these are, some of the core things that we're looking at and that we really need to do in our business. Um, so you need, we all need a tool that performs all these kinds of functions because those kinds of functions aren't just unique to flooring. They're, they're unique to all kinds of businesses have to do similar types of things. And so we need these tools to be able to do this. And the name of the tool that does all these functions is commonly known as either business management software or ERP software, Inter enterprise resource planning. Sometimes you may have heard that acronym before and not really understood what it meant, but it's really the same. ERP is more comes from outside of our industry. Um, it's commonly used in other, other industries all over. It's kind of the generic term. So I, I, I hope you remember that term ERP it's just the business management software that's used to perform all these core functions that a business has to do, okay? So as we're looking at this here, right? Um, the ERP is the center of everything that we're doing. It's the main tool. 
And then you have these other kind of tools that kind of can be used to supplement other tasks that are outside the main core day-to-day -day operations. So there's all these other kinds of tools that can also be um, included. Um, a lot of these kinds of tools that are external to ERP software are specifically used to drive more business. You know, they're marketing tools, a lot of them, and things that are used to drum up more business. So using these tools together is kind of a key thing, but the whole thing is, is if you don't have ERP business management software in place and working efficiently the way it needs to, you're gonna be spinning your wheels and it's gonna be painful because you're gonna to try to drive more business with these other tools and you can't handle the business. And so you're wasting your money, right? So first of all, you've gotta get efficient and get the right kind of tools, main tools in place so that you can handle the extra business that you're gonna drive there. So that, that's kind of a key point here. Don't, don't drive more business if you can't handle it, you're just wasting money, right? So, um, so let me just talk about um, some people, some businesses, let's just say, try to uh, emulate ERP tools through a lot of different methods, right? So we've seen in the past, I'm sure, Jim, you've seen this uh, quite a bit, where the pen and paper is, is the choice, right? People are, um, uh, you know, kind of stuck in that mode. When I first got into this about 20 years ago, about 25% of all the floor covering stores use pen and paper to run their business. And um, it was pretty interesting. So, How long ago was that when you first 20 started? Years, 20 years okay. ago. Okay. All right. Yeah. But I, I've seen, you know, that is not very common anymore, but it still exists. I was on the golf course the other day with a guy who was telling me that, that he was never going to change, you know? And so I, I don't know. It was really interesting. Um, Microsoft Excel or databases, generic, these generic kind of software programs, people also use those. Those are still being used in the industry here and there. And then also very, very popular is just some generic accounting or other business software, not designed for flooring. Uh, QuickBooks would be the best example here um, of accounting, generic accounting software, things like unto that, but they're pretty generic in nature. All these kinds of methods that I'm talking about here are used to try to replace the ERP systems, but they're really just what I call one gear systems, right? You're, if, if you're stuck in these kinds of tools and stuff, you're not gonna get out of the one gear. You're gonna be sitting there trying to pedal faster and faster and you're not gonna go anywhere. Uh, well, not where you wanna go at least, right? So I wanna bring up just a, a real, example of what I'm talking about here, right? The assumption with this example is that we're using one gear tools, like the ones I just were, was talking about. Let's take a store, like a retail store that's doing $1 million in sales, right? We see this kind of a store all the time. Jim, maybe you, you see this kind of, a, uh, kind of a store. I just wanna use this as kind of a baseline, three people, 4% net profits, very generous, I think. That would be a very well-oiled score. Uh, the average in the industry is below that. And so if you do that $1 million in sales, you're gonna make $40,000, okay? But let's say that you wanna go from 1 million to $2 million in sales, right? Well, what do you have to do to do that, okay? Well, you have to add at least two more people, okay? Uh, a salesperson and probably an operations person to, to handle the extra uh, stuff that's going. Again, the assumption is that you're using one gear tools, okay? Those salaries are gonna be somewhere probably in the $100,000 range just to make it a nice even number. And, um, and then if we're kind of generous um, for the second million because you're gonna get some efficiencies on and some fixed costs like rent would be one that's not gonna go up you know, you're gonna make a little bit more net profit on that second uh, million dollars, or I'm gonna give you $60,000, okay? So if we add all these numbers together, you got 40,000 from the first million, 60,000 from the second million, which equals $100,000, 5% return, okay, overall. 
okay? Let me go to a second example here, right? Maybe we put some better tools in place. So let's take this example of what I'm talking about. And we see this all the time. This is real stuff, I'm not just making this up, okay? So with a better tool, you're still gonna get the 40,000 from the first million. You put a better tool in place, and then you wanna go from 1 million to $2 million in sales. But you gotta buy a tool that's gonna manage the extra business. So it's $5,000. The difference is you still have to add the one salesperson, but you can save the back office operations person that you would have had to hire because your tools aren't handling all the efficiencies that you need to handle, okay? So now if we add up this uh, scenario, you got the 40,000 from the first million still, you got the 60,000 from the second million still, and you got the 45,000 from the employee that you didn't have to hire. Then you minus off the $5,000 on the software or the tool that you had to buy, and you got 140,000 instead of 100,000, okay? Net profit, $40,000 difference. Now it's crazy because I get people coming to me all the time saying, yeah, but QuickBooks only costs like a couple hundred dollars or blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, no. It's costing you $40,200. You don't get it. And this is the whole thing is that we are just stuck in a one gear when if you're using a tool that has multiple gears, it's going gonna, it's gonna to really do this. Now, let me give you some other real life examples, right? One that, we, that we've gone through and know exactly how this went. The recession. So we're talking about recessions. The last recession, 2007 to 2012. The floor covering industry lost about 20% of all the floor covering dealers, retail floor covering dealers in the U.S. Jim, would you concur with that number? Oh, definitely. It was a bloodbath. Okay. Some say 20, as much as 25, but 20 to 25%. Okay. Um, after that recession ended, we went through all of our records and everything. And what we found is that people that were actually using Q floors we only lost 3% of our dealers. In fact, the majority of our dealers kept paying our maintenance, got us through the recession. And I mean, I'm not saying every single part of that was Q floors because you know, people have to make adjustments and do, but I think the tool definitely had part. And I've had people come back to me and tell me that if it wasn't for that tool, that they wouldn't have survived the, the recession. So I think there, there's some good, um, Good things there. And the reason that all that happened is because you know the changes that you need to make and you can be more efficient with less. And so when hard times come, you can make better decisions and do things more efficiently. Okay. You know, I want to add to what you're saying there, Chad, uh, because I launched Flooring Success Systems in 07, you know, the year before the housing market got nuked. And the what what we saw similar things we literally had dealers who set sales records and what a con a thing that's common between, I think what we experienced and you did is that the, it was the dealers who were willing to put these efficiencies in place and put things in place that other dealers, the, 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 the rank and file, the mediocre majority simply weren't. And what happened was um, to some of the dealers um, maybe this happened in your case too, is they outlasted their competitors. And then uh, like one dealer we had had three competitors, including a national chain go out of business. Well, they scooped up all that market share. Yep. You know, it's like that old joke of the two hikers and a bear's going to start to chase them. And one of them puts on his running shoes. Yep. And he's and this the guy says, you can't outrun a bear. And he says, I don't have to outrun the bear. I just have to outrun you. Yep. 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 And that's, that's exactly right. So if they had these efficiencies and tools already in place before they were ahead of everybody. Right. I mean, that, that was clear. So yeah, thank you for adding that. And that's good. But some people might just still be saying, how can this be? And let me just say, these are just a few things that I've listed that kind of, um, I think can better help you understand, but with these tools, you're going to get better collaboration between employees. 
employees are going to know exactly what jobs they need to do and you're not stepping all over each other you're not doing things twice you're not trying to find papers you know stuff like that so there's going to you're going to get an efficiency and collaboration between employees you're going to get everyday tasks that are done more efficiently even some that aren't even on this list that i have here you're going to do fewer mistakes okay you're going to be able to inventory track a lot better protect against theft. I, sometimes I people tell me I don't have inventory. Well, almost everybody has glues, trim pieces, pad, that kind of stuff. So there's some things that are just walking out the door for people and most people don't even know it, right? B2B, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here. We could do a whole webinar just on B2B, but what FC B2B is, it's, it's a connection, an electronic connection between these tools I'm talking about um, these tools with multiple gears and the suppliers and the vendors. And um, we can transfer things like pricing updates and we can order electronically and, and do a lot of things through B2B. There's a lot of efficiencies that we can get there. And, uh, and it's uh, things that you would never get in QuickBooks, right? It's, it's, so this is another efficiency. Job profitability. Knowing if you're going to make or lose money before you ever sell a deal is a huge thing. I, we have a lot of customers that after they've been using the software for a while, they're like, I did not know why, how, what I was selling things for. And it was blind. And this has been a game changer for me. So real time business information, knowing where you're at financially and profitability wise in a timely manner. Some people let that go for months and months. And sometimes they don't know until tax day if they made or lost money. With these kinds of tools, you can get very, very accurate information quickly, right? Um, uh, ac accurate uh, profitability reports using the matching principle. Simply what this is, is a lot of people, especially on QuickBooks, will use the cash-based system instead of an accrual system. And if you can use the matching principle in your ac accounting, then as you're selling jobs and putting expenses towards those all at the same time, now your P&L statements and your accounting statement uh, uh, reports are all going to match and make more sense. When those things don't match up, you can't tell whether you're making or losing money. It, it's, it's not accurate, right? Um, using industry units. So what this is, is within the software, selling things by square yards, selling things by square feet, linear feet, um, getting the units correct, getting the, you know, not making the mistakes on units being able to track inventory by the right kind of units. All these things make a difference. Create, uh, prevent mistakes. Uh, installer payment tracking, not double paying your uh, contractors is a big one. And then this use tax thing, um, you know, and this is another one, uh, Jim, uh, Brandon, that, you know, when I got in this uh, business like 20 years ago, more than 20 new years ago, we're like 22 years now, 23, um, back then about 85% of all the floor covering stores were myth, were not paying their sales tax correctly. They were overpaying their sales tax and it's gotten a lot better. People are a lot more informed now, but tools like QuickBooks and stuff don't do use tax tracking and calculations. And so, uh, this, this one, one thing alone, if you're doing it wrong, that could be another $30,000 a year for a million dollar store you could be overpaying your taxes by $30,000 a year. So just that one right there. So I'm not saying everybody's doing that. People are getting better at it, but it's just another thing. So if you look at these kinds of things, you start adding all these things together and you can see how if you're doing some of these things wrong, that's where that $40,000 savings is going to come in. It's not just one thing. It's when you start adding all these things up together, right? So the right tool for our industry is a floor, floor covering specific ERP software system, okay? Um, if you're using a generic one, I, unless you're out of the norm, I think you're wasting a lot of money, okay? Now, this tool that I'm talking about is not a silver bullet. And sometimes I get people thinking that, you know, because I'm giving them all this information about why they need this and, and so sometimes they'll get it, they'll install it and say, what's going on? You know, they think they just install it and that's it. And that's not, 
There's more to it than that. And so I just want to kind of briefly go over what you need to expect with one of these tools, right? Um, here's the keys to being successful with having a tool um, like I'm talking about. Dealers need to be willing to invest time and effort into the implementation, right? It's going to take some time to get this set up. Now, when I say that, I'm not talking months, okay? I'm not talking, you know, three, four months. I'm talking a consistent effort over two to three weeks. You're going to be there. You're going to be able to start using it. We, we usually, for our customers, if they're going to set it up themselves, um, we usually tell them pick a day that's probably four to six weeks in the future so that you're not rushed, but you can have it going in that amount of time with as much as about um, probably four to five extra hours a week of work. So like an hour a day, staying after work for an hour a day um, type of a thing, you'll get there, you know, after two to three weeks and you'll be ready to go. So I'm not talking about, you know, burning the midnight oil for months. No, I'm not talking about that. We actually have a product where um, it's more money if we come out to your store, but in four days, we take you from, you know, basically training you to converting you all over in four days. It's more intense, but we, it's kind of like ripping the bandaid off, right? Instead of doing it gradually over time, we come in and within a week, we got you doing. So the point here is though, dealers need to be willing to invest time and uh, knowing that going in that there's going to be an investment. Okay. The second thing is dealers need to be willing to make some adjustments if needed. They need to be a little bit flexible. I've seen so many, and Jim, I'm sure you've seen this too with what you do, so many different ways to run a company, right? There's people, it's it's not the same across the board. Um, these ERP systems, they have a pretty specific way, a model of running the business. And there's some flexibility in that, but the dealers also need to be a little bit flexible to change policies and procedures to more closely match the tool. And they'll what get I, great, greater What, what I like about that, Chad, is a, a tool like this is going to force you to um, eliminate some bad habits, is essentially. That, that is correct. Yep. Clean up some of these bad habits. And, and it's just going to make it so much better. But I've seen dealers that are like, my grandpa told me how to do it this way, and <laughs> I'm not changing, and you know, it's the right way. And so I, I'm just saying, this is just one thing that you need to be aware of, right? There'll probably need to be a few changes in how you're doing some things. Um, the owners and the leadership of the company need to be committed to the change, okay? Inevitably, you're gonna have employees that some of them that don't wanna change, that are gonna kick against this. They just don't wanna, they like what they're doing. They don't care if it's gonna make the business more money. They just know that it's going to be more work for them to have to learn something new. And so the owners have to be ready to make, um, not to make, but to make sure that their employees are, you know, committed to this and that they've got to be committed to it. Um, and so just be aware of that. Okay. But just the last thing here, this has nothing to do with the dealers. This has to be uh, more to do with the tool that you get, right? it can't be too complicated and difficult to learn. So maybe you get this tool with all these more gears, you know, it doesn't just have one gear. So it's for the industry. It, you know, it, it has more um, options for the industry, but if it's too difficult to learn and too complicated, you're not going to use all the extra gears that you got. You're going to stay in the gears that you're comfortable with because it's too hard to switch gears. So that's just one other thing. Ease of use is a big thing to success. Okay, um, I'm going to kind of go back to this um, slide here for one second. Um, you can see that the um, ERP system is the center, as we talked about before, and then you have these other integrations. And I, I want to just talk about briefly about integrations for one second, right? So you can see that Roombo, you know, of course, room visualization, right? They have this integration where they have they are in all kinds of websites. They have their own. I, I know that you're in you're putting yours in a lot of different websites, right, Brandon? Not just your own. And I've seen it in yeah. different places. And so yeah, we're, uh, we are proud. We are at five thousand uh, dealers, and that's growing really, really rapidly. So it's uh, we, we're definitely integrated in quite a few. So you're you're integrated there, and then the whole idea there is that. 
some integrations come through to your ERP system, right? So you can already see this with your company where the leads and those kind of things are being passed through to Qfloor. So your room visualizer, website, Qfloors, right? I want to I want to make a kind of a, a, I think this is the best example right here with CRMs, and so I wanted to spend just a few minutes in this CRM space for a second. CRM is a generic term that is used everywhere, right? And there's very, some very popular ones. Salesforce is a really big one that people use outside of our industry. Um, so it's kind of a generic tool that people use to do a lot of things to help with their marketing. It also helps with um, uh, gathering leads and managing leads and things like that. Qfloors actually has a built-in CRM inside of our system, okay? Uh, it's great. We have, I think most of our customers that are using CRMs use our built-in Qfloor CRM. Doesn't cost any more money. It's all included. That's probably one of the reasons, right? But some people don't like all the features that we have in our CRM. So, um, so there have been looking other places. There's a, a product out there called Retail Lead Management um, that was designed here four or five years back for floor covering industry, built by a floor covering dealer. And, um, and they have some features that are built in CRM didn't have in Qfloors. And so there were some of our customers that really liked some of these additional features that were there. And so RLM, Retail Lead Management, built an interface to Qfloors. And so we gave them the option to use this other lead management system instead of our own internal one. We didn't care. We just wanted what our customers, you know, what was going to be best for them. Well, there's this other CRM called Zoho, which is popular, hugely popular outside of our industry. It is a, one of the most powerful CRM tools. It can do way more than what the Qforce CRM does and way more than what lead management, uh, retail lead management does, right? It, is, it, is, it does a lot of awesome stuff and it has a lot of features that, uh, that neither of our CRMs will ever have. Well, we have customers that are savvy enough and, and, and want those extra features, right? And so we have an integration to Zoho. So the idea is when you're looking at integrations, you don't want to limit um, our, we don't want to limit our enterprise, our uh, ERP users to what software they have to use outside of us, right? People should be able to choose these kinds of things and have their choice. And so that's just my other suggestion is just make sure that um, that you have integrations that are possible. And I think uh, the ability for people to choose, you know, which, which types of programs that they want to is, is a key thing. It's more of an open interface uh, for integrations. Chad, I know you mentioned in that last slide, and it goes nicely with this, this concept of ease of use and, and selecting the right vendor for these. And, and obviously this connectivity, making sure everything talks together, uh, drives that idea home. Have you seen, or are there numbers or anything that you can point to, to the increased efficiencies that your company gets when you do this the right way versus having an ERP, but one that doesn't talk to your CRM and one that doesn't talk to your visualizer? How much of a lift is having something that really talks together smoothly and having that engine run, let's use your gear analogy, having it all run uh, cohesively? I don't have any numbers, so to speak, that I could quote or that I could give to you. It's a great question. I think uh, I think it's it's more that sometimes what happens is, especially with these ERP systems, Brandon, is that sometimes you're forced into using a certain product that is probably not the best product, right? Sure. And that's more the more what I'm getting to is there are many different products that can fulfill these integration roles and be added on. And, and, uh, and the ability to be able to choose the right product with the right integration is gonna, gonna help you. If you're, stuck yes. in the, if you're stuck into one that you can't get out of, that's worse, right? And from like an adoption perspective alone, something that feeds nicely with all the things that all of your RSAs have been using Traditionally, it's got to make it just way easier to get everyone to adopt this tool. Yeah. 
And, and, and again, the key is too, if I just might reiterate this again, if you don't have this ERP part in place, it does you no good to drive more business, right? Now you have this in place. Now all these other programs that are driving business to you, you can handle that business. That's the key. And the integrations are all part of that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for bringing that up. I, I just briefly just wanted to mention in-home sales. Um, it's a bigger deal right now. Um, mobility, being able to do things offsite. Uh, dealers are going into more people's homes now than, than just in their dealerships and the storefronts. Um, really, um, technology can facilitate this. I think um, uh, we all know and understand this, that Jim, maybe you know, are, are the close rates a lot higher if you're in their house versus in a dealership or? No question. Okay. I, I, I assume that and I've heard that. I just wanted to confirm that. But uh, so that's one reason why people are getting into people's homes, right? Let me just um, kind of uh, just explain a little bit what's needed, right? In my, in my uh, um, experience, if you're gonna be doing things in people's homes, you really need estimation software um, on an iPad where you can go in, kind of draw out uh, using a laser measuring tool, draw out the, the uh, layout of their house and, um, and then give them actual pictures, quantities, scene diagrams. Uh, you really need that because if you don't have that, um, the next guy that comes to do the estimate at their house will have that and you are going to not get that job because you look like you're podunk and you look, it's more, it's more like what you look like than what you're going to do, right? And it just looks so much more professional. So I think if you're doing it in somebody's house, you need to have an estimation tool that you're taking out there. Um, it just makes you look so much better. Um, you need to be able to quickly produce a quote. So your ERP system, your business system has to be cloud-based somehow where you can be connecting back and, and being able to produce a quote there electronically for the person, not on a piece of paper, but electronically produce a quote for them, right? On a, on a computer. So it looks professional too. Um, in order to do that, you've got to have product information, availability of product, which means a cloud connection so that you can know if you can get the stuff that they're picking out. All that's pretty critical. Um, and so if you have the quantities from your estimation software, you have know what product that you're going to be doing, um, then you need to be able to accurately produce um, a total, including tax. Some estimation software produces estimates, but they can't actually produce a full quote. And so just make sure that you can produce a full quote, including the correct taxes and everything. And then you need to be able to get them to sign the count contract and that's usually electronic signatures, right? So you're gonna email them right there while you're sitting there, the contract that they can electronically sign and, uh, and, and get back to you right while you're sitting there with them. And then you gotta be able to take a payment, right? So some kind of a, a payment uh, processing uh, that you can do offsite. So these are all the things to be able to do. Now, let me just say that most ERP, floor covering ERP systems can do almost all of these things, okay? So I think, I think in today's world, um, most people, uh, most software companies have developed all these kinds of um, things to be, it, you just need to take advantage of what's been, been developed out there. And it, and it does take a little bit more specialized hardware and a little bit more work, familiarity, with how to do things, how to connect to the internet, which I have right here. You're gonna to have to have internet access. Some people are using their phones to do that. Other people are getting specialized uh, mobile internet devices. They're, they're a little bit easier if you buy those. It costs a little bit extra a month to do that. Um, but some people find it's a lot easier than just sitting there trying to connect everything to your phone when you get to the guy's house. But you so, know what's harder than doing all of that? What's that? Going out to homes and doing measures and losing them after spending hours of time. And so, if if you can, if your if your close rate is, let's say, for all your measures, you're closing fifty percent of your measures, and you five out of ten, and you bump it to just six out of ten, yeah, just six out of ten, you have 
overwhelmingly paid for any time, energy, and money it takes to implement this and kind these, of a system yeah, into your business. Exactly. All these specialized tools and that internet, that other device for the internet, one. Yeah. It, it's, we, have, it's, we have so many dealers that are in the estimate business instead of the closed sale business. Yeah. Yeah, you and, would know about that. <laughs> and that's only going to get worse with the recession. Guys, you are used to right now, um, we've been in a remodeling boom. Uh, all you got to do is have a pulse and you can sell flooring right now. That's that's going to change. Whether we hit a recession now or whether the market turns, this is not a permanent state of affairs. So all these tips, all these things that Chad's covering are what's going to help make the difference between you thriving through the net, you know, recession market downturn or being a, a statistic. So the kind of the point here then, Jim, with this other devices, if you have like, you know, you pay a little bit more, but you have another device, you can just go turn it on in the house and you have all your, all of these, um, you know, your, your estimation and your ERP, you have them all connected to the internet right then. You don't have to fiddle around with trying to um, uh, pair them with your phone and that kind of a thing, right? So that's why, that's why I kind of brought that up. But yeah, thank you. Um, I just, before we end, I just want to come back to this ease of use thing real quick, right? At the end here, I, I think it's so important um, because getting a tool that has the gears, the floor covering expertise, but if it's not easy to use, my experience has been people won't use it. Um, and so I just kind of want to touch on this just one time, more time before we, before we end. On our silver bullet slide, this was one of the keys to success was making sure it's easy enough to use, right? So that you can use it. I just want to give one just real quick example of Q floors and what, I, what I'm talking about with ease of use. Usually, a lot of things come into ease of use, but one of them is uh, things that are easy to measure would be number of mouse clicks, number of screens that you have to go to to accomplish a certain task inside of your software, right? So let me just go here real quick, see if I can get down here. Um, this is what QFloors look like. So this would be an ERP tool that we've been talking about this whole time, right? Um, you can notice that we have these six buttons up here at the top of the screen. Um, the sales people will only see sales and materials. They only have to know two screens in the whole software. 90% of what a salesperson does, they can see either right here or right here. They, have, they don't have to go anywhere else. Okay. And if you'll notice, these screens look the same. There's a list of cells over here. The details, when I click, you have the details right here with one click. And then you have a filter down here so that you can find the cell that you're looking for. If you go to the material screen, like the inventory screen, same thing. There's a list, there's the details, and then there's a finder. So not only are there only two screens they have to deal with, but they look the same way, right? They're, they're you know, they work the same way. Um, and then if you look at these other screens that like the owner would have to deal with, like the vendor, this would be paying your vendor bills, this would be your checkbook screen, your employee screen. It's all kind of the same, right? There's a list right here, the details and a, and a thing. So we've simplified what people have to learn so they can learn it a lot faster. And that's one thing that I'm talking about with ease of use. How easy can, can you teach somebody and learn? I'll bet, Jim, if I turned you loose here, I'll bet you could find a cell if I told you to go find a cell now in five minutes. Well, and now you gotta remember, this is me you're dealing with. I, that's exactly branded. why I picked you as the example. <laughs> I'm, I'd, I'd love to see that happen. I'm actually <laughs> in. I, I didn't want to pick Brandon, I want to pick you. Yes, well, I'll tell you, okay, so what, what do, you, do you want me to do something here? No, no, I don't, but okay, I, I, all right. I'm, just, I'm just saying, you know, I, within just a few minutes. Even I, Jim can use it. Even Jim. You can, can even use, Jim can use it. I, I, I don't know if we have time for a quick story. Do you remember Sam Allman, Jim? Who? Sam Allman. Do you know Sam Allman? I, I don't know. Oh, you don't know him? Uh, he's way back. Anyway, uh, he was a consultant in the industry a while back, and his dad had a store. And he told me, if you can teach my dad how to use this, he was 80 years old at the time, I'll buy it. 
<laughs> and we and they were our very first customer 25 years ago so oh, um yeah so anyway that that's just a side story anyway um let me come back over here just real quick um now to to our screen so that's just one example being able to teach somebody how to use this really quick i want to give just a recent example of what i'm talking about where i'm talking about not so easy to use um just recently, we had a QFloors customer. I know about this because uh, they emailed me um, about a month ago um, that actually got talked into switching off of our QFloor system onto another system, right? And they were on there for about four months. And they got it all up and going, got their financial statements going and all that. And then they decided that it was too hard to use, right? And this is the just a small part of the email that she sent to me. And I think you'll see the, the corresponding multiple clicks versus fewer clicks, right? Uh, she's kind of got this perspective. Uh, she says, everything on the new system was more than 10 clicks from anything else. It's menus on menus on menus. I laugh when I tell my partner, it's like Chinese, it's like a Chinese maze. You have to memorize how to get in. You have to memorize how to get out. Nothing is intuitive. We realized that it was uh, was something we want to. We realized it was that it was something that we didn't want to be teaching every one of our new employees that we brought on over the next se several years. Looking back, I can see that we were drinking the Kool Aid and not doing proper vetting before jumping on board. Okay, so I think you can see the contrast of um, of of you know. If you have to do tons and tons of clicking and stuff like that, it just makes it so much more efficient. And in the end, like she was kind of saying, we're never going to use it all because it's too hard. Okay. So that's just, I kind of wanted to come back to that because it really is, I think, a major point in all of this. Um, so in her sense, the gears were all there, but it was too hard to use all of these gears. Okay. All right, so just in summary, we're coming to the end here. You gotta have the right tool. If you're using the bike with one gear, if you're using tools for your ERP system that only have one gear that are not floor covering specific, you don't got the right tool in my opinion, okay? Generic ERP systems, you know, generic systems that you've got in there, they only have one gear. Floor covering specific ERP systems have more gears, and will be a better tool for what you need to do, um, but make sure that they're easy enough to use that you can use all the gears that people are giving to. You know, they, all the features and functions can be there, but if it's too hard, you're not gonna use those gears. You're got, always gonna be stuck in the first gear anyway. So it's not gonna do you any good, okay? So basically, you know, that's, that's really the presentation I had today and uh, some of the tips and things I think to really help some people. That was awesome. I wanted to thank you. And I actually wanted to, I didn't say it at the beginning. So I'm going to give some people some time now. Uh, we have a Q&A box. So uh, please, uh, if you have some questions that you want to ask Chad live right now, please go and do that. Uh, and, and well, I'll give people a few seconds to, uh, to, to submit their questions and, and then I'll read them out here. One question, or I guess, I guess it's a question uh, that, that I had it and it comes from the last time or a couple of times ago that we spoke, Chad, you said something that stood out uh, that someone isn't fully onboarded to your platform when they have your software. Uh, they're fully onboarded when they're able to produce monthly financial and, and specifically timely monthly financial statements, not a financial statement uh, for October all the way in January of the next year. So what sort of support do you guys give so that you're not just giving them a platform, but you're also making something that is foreign to a lot of us, easy to use and, and powerful and, and insightful? So, um, yeah, so we don't consider our dealers to be successful until they're producing monthly financial statements, right? Some people are a long ways from that, but we provide them this tool and it kind of goes back to what I've just been harping on a little bit because I think it's easy enough to use. They can use the whole system and they can produce monthly financial statements easier than they can in a lot of other cases. 
And, and so they will do it and, and can do it. And in that sense, they're going to have for Jim and other people like Jim, you know, they, they have the information so he can come in and then help them to make any of the changes and adjustments that they need to make to, to, to make this all happen. If they're not producing monthly financial statements, it's a mess. You can't, you're not going to be able to be helped. So I think it's important that everybody understand that getting to the end of this process, monthly financial statements is, is the key to everybody. And so for us, you kind of ask the question, when somebody buys our product, we, um, we give them unlimited support. So they pay one price. They can call us as much as they want. They can set up the appointments as much as they want. You know, if we're talking to somebody five times a day, that's fine. We're, we're okay with that. We were, some people require that. Some people call us once every two weeks. You know, it, 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 the people are different, but the whole key is get, getting people up and going, getting financial statements. Awesome. We, uh, we got quite a few questions here. I'll try to get through uh -oh, them all. Uh -oh. Uh, no, they're all good. Uh, Roger uh, Stowell asks, you know, how long do estimates on average take to do? And, and maybe I'll add to that. Have you seen, do you have sort of how much more efficient things get when they use a platform like yours? Um, estimates can be done very quickly. I, I would say it takes, it takes a couple of weeks, right? When you first get on the software, you're not going to be you can probably handwrite the statements faster than you can than putting them in the system because you're just not used to it. Yeah. But after a week or so, and knowing how to do things and how it works, you can do it very quickly. One thing that, that helps with that is if you've got a good product catalog from a, from a dealer and know what everything costs through our B2B connections and stuff makes it really quick and really fast. Um, I mean, I, if you watch some of our users do it, it's a pretty lickety split. You, I can't do it as fast as our users can do it for sure. I, I'm going to, I'm going to back you up here because I, honest to God, you can't even write this stuff right below it is some, uh, uh, another comment from someone else, Rich Corona, who says I did three big quotes in uh, Q floors during this webinar. So during this webinar, three were put out. So, so Roger, that uh, might help answer your question. Maybe can I just add one thing to that question? We have a thing called templates. So if people have already created a quote like that in the past, it's just, it, you can copy the whole thing just like that. So there, it just depends, but go ahead. Awesome. Uh, Guy asks, what's the major difference between Q floors and, and other popular systems uh, that are out there today in the flooring industry? Um, well, I've harped on ease of use quite a bit already. I think, I think we're one of the easier ones to use. I, I can say this, our support department is unrivaled. And, and the reason I think I can say that uh, publicly, I know of a third party um, uh, entity that has recently done uh, a study. They had a bunch of questions about customer support, about uh, customer um, what satisfaction, all that kind of stuff. Um, Q floors killed it much. Uh, if you look, Q floors won that by a long ways. Um, I think we were 4.4 out of five stars. Nobody was else was even close to that. That's awesome. Um, I guess the last one that, that we have time for here, and I'm going to shoot you some ones that uh, we, we won't have time for, but Tanya asks uh, how flexible the program is to add other services, for instance, carpet cleaning. You know, if, if, if people here are doing more than just floors, how easy is that to integrate? Yeah, there, um, it depends on what it is. For carpet cleaning, we have several people that are, I mean, obviously we have lots of stores that do that. There's other site industries that we handle everyday furniture, paint, um, cabinets, you know, all those kind of extra industries that you would typically see, see in a floor covering store. We have dealers that, that are handling all those other kinds. Come to find out, floor covering is actually probably the hardest type of product to handle, right? Um, we have other software companies trying to break into this industry all the time. You'll see them show up for a couple of years, ERP systems like, right? The ones we're just talking about, they'll show up for a couple of years and find out, oh, this is too hard. Flooring's way too hard. So if you've done flooring, these other industries, most of them are pretty, pretty easy to, to use with. Awesome. 
Uh, if you asked a question and, and we didn't get around to it, I am going to make sure that, Chad, you get any of these questions and uh, that way we can get some answers over to you. Um, but on that note, I just wanted to thank you personally for taking the time to chat with us. I can personally attest to uh, hearing directly from dealers that, that your customer service is just unbelievable. And I think my favorite story on your website is your, your now wife, but then uh, you, in high school you were dating. Uh, you, there's a story on your site that says that on your way to prom, you stopped to go and do a carpet measure. So I think that that was sort of ingrained uh, for a long, long time. And that's an I'm, awesome story, man. I'm sure that was exaggerated, Brandon. I don't know. That's folklore there. I don't know, man. I believe it. So uh, I just wanted to thank you for uh, for chatting with us. And uh, if we want to, if, if anyone on, on the call today wants to get in touch with you specifically, uh, is there an easy way to do that? Do you have your contact info ready? Yeah, I mean, if, if you want to contact me directly, you can. Chad at qprosoftware.com. That's qprosoftware.com. That's the best way to get a hold of me directly. That's how my customers do it if they need to. Um, but really, you can uh, just go ahead and uh, go to our website. We have all our contact information at qfloors.com. Um, there's contact information there. Our sales department, they'll take care of you. Um, so, you know, we're, we're more than more than willing to answer any questions that you might have. Awesome. Well, thank you. Great, Chad. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys. It's been great. Not awesome. as bad as I thought. And I thought, <laughs> uh, hopefully I didn't blow it. No, listen, I, if anything, you got, you're, you're biking 80 miles, gym jumping out of planes. I've decided I have to adopt an extreme sport for the next webinar. So you guys who are joining, thank you guys for taking the time. Stay tuned for whatever extreme adventure I decide to, to go down here. And uh, really, guys, we can't do it without you. It's insane to watch. Uh, it's been really humbling to sort of watch the network grow. And I'm going to have to get a new uh, Zoom pass for, for bigger lobbies pretty soon, which is awesome. <laughs> and, uh, nice. so, Jim, thank you for obviously Absolutely. being the best co-host. Chad, thanks again for joining us. And thanks, we'll see you guys. Yep. Bye, thanks, guys. guys. Bye now.